Next up, we have Halle Gattery. Halle is a multi-genre writer living in rural Ontario on Anishinaabe land. Fuse, her memoir of mixed race identity and mental illness, was published by Guernica Editions Maryland Imprint in 2021. Her debut collection of poetry, Rebellion Box, is due out with Radiant Press this month. And Halle, is it out already? And Halle's short fiction collection, Widow Fantasies, is scheduled for release with Gordon Hill Press, Hill Press. 2024. There she is. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Um, it's it's going to be out in a few days, a couple of days. I think the 14th is when it's scheduled. So soon, soon. Um, and I'm excited. Um, and I'm excited to uh, share this poem with you. Thank you so much for inviting me, Crystal. Thank you, everybody else. I, um, I'm i really honored to be in this space with you talented people. So thank you. Um, the poem I'm going to be reading, I, I just kind of, it's the first poem in my collection. It was an easy pick. I've never read it out loud before. And it kind of reflects what I'm going through right now because um, it's about um, aging and uh, kind of sliding into invisibility um, in the eyes of the audience you're used to playing for. So um, this, uh, and it's interesting, I just I just turned 42, I'm not precious about my, you know, sharing my age, I could care less. Um, but I, it's, this, this poem is called Postcard Santa Maria. And it um, takes place when I went to Cuba uh, a few a few years ago. So this was, you know, before my forties even. And, and I was sitting next to a girl and um, who was in her teens and still very much like she was a teenager. But like I'm looking at her thinking she's a baby, right? She's a baby, but she was just being um, just aggressively hit on constantly. And um, her mom was right there. Um, and, you know, I I did my usual thing, which is lose my shit on people who weren't taking a hint just to leave this person alone. Um, but, you know, I, I started reflecting when I got home about how I was also really, really, like, conflicted. Because on one hand, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's really nice to be invisible. Like, it's it's lovely not to have to put up with this level of garbage anymore. Um, and it's just invisible from a certain population, like a certain population of people, a certain kind of person, you know, it's not everybody, but as the attention that, you know, especially as, you know, I think young women were used to getting from a certain really aggressive um, type of man specifically. Um, so I, I, you know, I was dealing with that, but I also felt like really hurt. <laughs> like, ah, the creeps aren't noticing me anymore. Like, and it was really, just really, well, why should, like, isn't that a good thing? So this poem kind of um, deals with, you know, what I was feeling and um, all that fun stuff. So it's it's not a very long poem um, and I'm going to read it to you. And uh, yeah, thank you again for having me. Across the pool, the boy's plum dark eyes gulp refracted light all over the girl beside me. Stretched to indifference, her thighs are perfectly fattened calves, flicking flies, their frisson of velvet shimmers made slow by the strugged heat, made soft. I'm not that girl anymore. I have the conviction of dust and the cervix of a 15 year old, my doctor says, not bad for four kids. So I believe in anything so I can believe at all. The boy is coming, snakes sway in his hips, a roving satellite over breast and breath and brown. His air compressed confidence warps the children's laughter, baffles the sun so even the girl looks up. I'm not that girl anymore. Her curling toes, her eyes impossible behind shades, her weight inside me shifting, my embarrassment of cliches scattered like nail clippings. Thank you.
Oh, Holly, yay. Oh, that was beautiful. And as a woman who is 53, if I may say, I can totally relate, but I think you are gorgeous. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Oh my goodness.